I landed that role, but because I was so excited, I stayed in the market because she taught me don't stop interviewing until you start. Yes. Oh my so, gosh. Yes. You never go into interview saying we don't know. You're part of that process. You're part of that team. So even though you don't have that skill set at a proficient level, you still need to show up with value and yeah. how you can contribute to it. So you went from forty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. to in roughly 60 days quadrupling to hundred and sixty thousand right. dollars all right y'all so i'm super excited for this episode that we have today. i'm excited about this for a couple different reasons uh one i'm gonna say this i'm very excited because not only have we recently crossed over a hundred thousand subscribers with texas new black thank you to everybody that's been rocking with us whether you knew or you've been here we deeply deeply appreciate it but as always we want to make upgrades to the podcast and do different things that bring immense value to our community one of the upgrades that i was like yo it just makes sense is that we have to bring eric our video director on the podcast because eric is someone who is a close friend of mine i've known him for a long time he has incredible incredible insights wisdom but also a very goofy fun personality and there are a lot of valuable questions that he has for the guests that we have on the podcast but unfortunately he's never been able to voice some of those questions so i think it'll be a beautiful addition to the podcast i hope you all enjoy it as much as i'm looking forward to it so that's one of the things i'm excited about but what i'm even more excited about is the guest that we have on the podcast today where we're going to be talking about everything in the qa space and even more. There are a lot of questions y'all have been asking me about QA, about the difference between, between QA analyst versus QA tester versus QA automate. And I'm like, look, I, I just know some of the basics of what it is. I don't know all these extra details. I know as much as I know. So not only is the guest gonna be able to harp in on that, also be able to harp in on what it looks like when it comes to actually being a founder of a ed tech business as well as a variety of other topics that we're gonna cover. So you all are gonna to wanna to make sure that you stick around, listen to the end, because there's going to be constant gems dropped all throughout this episode. But as always, we gotta go ahead and put some respect on our guest's name. So Jennifer Gaddis, or Jenny, has held over seven different software testing roles and titles in her career. From manual QA tester, QA analyst, QA engineer, senior quality engineer, and junior scrum master. Told y'all, it's a lot we about to talk about. The Road to QA program, AKA RTQ, was designed to be an cost-effective, online, self-paced, and hybrid software testing career skills building development program with community support, group mentorship, and hands-on practical application to help newbies and career changers make a career pivot. And of course, she is the founder of RTQ, Road to QA. Y'all give a virtual round of applause. If you drive in your car, tap your steering wheel because we don't want you clapping your hands and, and crashing. So tap your steering wheel. You watching on YouTube, leave some fire emojis, clapping emojis, all that good stuff for our guest today, Jennifer Gaddis or Jenny. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being on Texas Do Black. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, super excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we, we were we were talking, we were having some real deep conversation, and we, we had to like stop because we were like, okay, we gotta start doing this recording. But it's like such an enriching conversation we were having. Hopefully, some of that can bleed over into this interview because there's so much that I know that you're gonna be able to gain from this episode. Uh, thank you for making time to, to to come out here, being on the show, mm -hmm. bring it, bring her your beautiful family, uh, just even seeing the support from that component. I love it so much definitely all right so we're going to go ahead and get into it so just from the jump what is a qa tester <laughs> versus a qa engineer mm -hmm. versus a qa analyst well the first thing i want to say is all of those titles vary across company to company anyway mm -hmm. so just because you're a qa tester in one company they can also call you a qa analyst in another company Okay. Now, for me, I would say a QA tester is maybe someone who just as simple as the same test software. Okay. Right? But I would say an analyst is one that actually is really thinks outside of the box of testing. Okay. So a tester, as, so you're not just going, you're just testing the website. You're thinking of testing as an analyst um, from the UI perspective, from the okay. user experience perspective perspective and also from the functionality perspective is it actually doing what it's supposed to do per the business requirement yeah 
So an analyst can really break the system, think of ways, different ways that you can actually think outside of the box to break yeah. the system, to come up to multiple scenarios, so that ultimately we create a quality product to the market for the end user. Now, a QA engineer, again, sometimes engineer is still like an analyst, right? Mm -hmm. But then a company can also, you can be an engineer where you also do some automation. Maybe you have some coding knowledge, mm, coding okay. skills. So at this level, now your skill sets are a little different. So a QA engineer may have a little more. They, not only do they test just the front end of the application, but they have database testing, yeah. right? They have API testing. Yeah. They have coding knowledge and programming mm -hmm. language abilities. So that's that's that would be overall the differences in a qa tester versus an analyst versus an engineer okay i love it because sometimes in this industry there are like there are roles that like there are different names but it's basically the same job right so i, I love how you touched on sometimes that's the case but in other cases those different titles actually mean something. They do. And so versus like like how you mentioned like analysts being someone who actually just like the title, they actually are analyzing mm -hmm. the they're analyzing the software, whether they're they're analyzing the I know you mentioned like the UI or the UX and other components, mm -hmm. but then the engineer actually maybe having some element of programming and coding involved. Mm -hmm. So would you say because people ask a lot about QA automation? Mm -hmm. So I love that you mentioned QA engineering is basically kind mm -hmm. of in line with QA automation. Is is that correct? Mm -hmm. Do they typically make more in QA automation or as a QA engineer versus just a uh, QA tester? Uh, yeah, but I've I mean I've landed roles um, well more senior, but I've landed roles still at ninety a hundred k. So I do believe like when you are more of a QA engineer because mm -hmm. you have those additional skills such as back end testing, database testing, API testing, or some coding. Yes, you're going to make more. Yeah. So you are much more valuable to the market. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, even in my program, I actually teach my students not to just show up as manual QA testers. I teach them to be analysts and QA engineers automatically. Mm -hmm. So that's actually what I feel is the difference in road to QA is you're I don't feel that you're just a manual QA and nor should you go to the market like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's important. I love that a lot because it allows people to automatically come in having other skill sets that other people have that are mm -hmm. that are already in the industry. So it makes right. them automatically competitive and desirable to the companies. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So you've been quoted as saying everyone is a software tester. They just don't know it yet. So I want to know from you, how is everyone already a software tester? Right. Well, you're already a software tester and you don't know it yet because you essentially have worked with programs, software, applications, hardware, devices that all have to be tested before they actually go out to the end user. Yeah, okay. Whether it's an internal team, an external team, customers or clients. Let's take the Walmart POS machine. Um, ironically, my husband actually used to work for that company remote in CR mm -hmm. and test that actual virtual software. Mm -hmm. So when you go off, even though people are saying, oh, automation is taking jobs, there still has to be a human element, a human oversight, right? Yeah. To review it. But so even though it might have minimized, someone still actually has to test those machines. Yeah. So you may have the customer service representative or manager who's actually managing those POS machines when customers actually come through right mm -hmm. but guess what if the receipt stops working if the debit card machine start if the debit um, part stops yeah they still have to come over and troubleshoot it that's true essentially from a program application standpoint they actually have been a SME a subject matter expert mm -hmm. and so most of us don't know how to pull that subject matter expert out from a program application standpoint so I say you're already a software tester, whether you've worked at a hospital and you are entering patient patient registration information. You just see it as I'm actually a nurse. I see it as you actually are would be a good UAT tester, a user yeah. acceptance tester, because you've actually tested or used patient registration information. Man, it's okay, that makes a lot of sense as to how everyone is is a QA tester. Let, let, let's actually go just granular or basic level okay because some people are listening and, and i'm thinking through, i'm like man you know what some people are listening to this right mm -hmm. now and they're probably like yo like what, what like what is a qa tester they're like okay i hear y'all talking about it y'all talking about the differences but just on a basic level what is a qa tester yes like okay. what's like a, a simple example a qa tester is someone who test a company's uh, program software or application to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do mm -hmm. and make sure that there are no bugs, errors, or flaws in the program before it gets out into the end user. Man, so someone can make, and I, I wanna say this so it's very clear for people, someone 
can make eighty to a hundred thousand dollars plus just testing out their company's software and yes. giving feedback on it. Yes. I think the the biggest thing is realize, and I like to tell my students, like, because I have some individuals that come from even just making fifty k, mm -hmm. so making an additional twenty k is a, a come up for them, right? So the Definitely. average offer, I say twenty, I mean seventy to a hundred k, but it also depends on your positioning and your and how competitive you are. Yeah, I have some students that maybe they aren't as keen on going into automation or understanding automation. But I actually push my students say you should be able to still speak to the importance of automation, how mm -hmm. to contribute to automation from a manual perspective, all of those things. Like do you, we never go into an interview saying we don't know. You're part of that process. You're part mm -hmm. of that team. So even though you don't have that skill set at a proficient level, you still need to show up with value and yeah. how you can contribute to it. So I tell my students that they still should have that when they go into the market. But the average offer, I would say anywhere from 70 to 100K, absolutely. But it will depends on your, depend on your skill set, your positioning, and how you package yourself in the market and what you can bring. And so I, I, want, I want to let everybody know that, and I mentioned this during, during her bio read, and I'm gonna, we're going to talk about this a little bit more so later as well during the interview, but I at least want to say this now early on, that uh, so Jenny is the founder of a QA program. And it's affordable. The price, I saw the price, I went to the website. It's a really amazing price. Best price that I've seen for a QA program. So for those of you that are interested, we're gonna make sure that we have everything in the show notes, in the description, <laughs> links, all of that good stuff so y'all can check it out because this is an incredible opportunity, especially at such an incredibly affordable price. So I at least wanted to, to drop that and mention that. Now we're gonna talk about it a little bit, uh, uh, some more a little bit later, okay. but I at least wanted to uh, mention that now. But, so let's go back a little bit. Now, so you you had mentioned a few different things about like what you've been doing in tech now and about mm -hmm. what you've done with your students, but what were you doing before tech and how did you make your career pivot to land the several different roles in just a year and a half? Ooh. So shout out to Greg Plasher of Self Tech and Lori of ABHIT Academy. Those were my mentors. Um, I came into uh, learning about uh, software testing when I got COVID. Me and my husband, our house shut down. And he was doing some insurance. I was doing, um, I was actually working for a software company doing technical support, making about 40K remote. Mm -hmm. And both of us got COVID at the same time and we couldn't work for like 30 days. Okay. And I was like, this can't ever happen again. Damn. Like, we ain't making enough. Like, everything just Ooh. shut down. And I literally had to go get a title loan on my car and I pawned my laptop in it to the point where I was so tired of doing it because they knew my name when I came in there. Dang. <laughs> yeah, and on my Instagram somewhere, I have the actual um, title shop or pawn shop where I used to go in and they used to know me my name and they'll be like, Oh, another month? Or, you know, I'm just like, I can't keep oh, doing this. <laughs> the fact that the, the farm people know your name. Yeah, it's like, it helped me, though. It helped me in ways, unfortunately, so I didn't have yeah. to disclose it to my family. And, you know, me and my husband worked together, but those are hard times. Yeah. So um, our house shut down, and I was like, actually, the, the September before, I had came into learning about Greg and software testing from him. And so I actually bought his ebook and his class, but um, because of um, everything that I was doing, his classes was a little long, so I also mm -hmm. combined it with some Udemy stuff. Okay. And then he also had Lori, who also did resume prep and one on one. So I kind of countered his ebook with going on Udemy and kind of sometimes we learn different ways. And I'm one of those where I got to kind of pick different things and I pull. Mm -hmm. And so then from there, um, I did like a a, a quick. Um, uh, preparation with Lori and she pushed me in the market because I kept procrastinating. Mm -hmm. She was like, you're not studying enough. And I was like, yeah, I am. I am. She said, okay, put the resume in the market. I said, you're not going to review it? She said, uh-uh, put it in the market. Within 24 hours, I landed a interview request. Oh, man. And I was like, holy crap. And it was for 80K remote. I was only making 40. So you literally... Jump from forty thousand to eighty thousand dollars. Yes, and I was so scared. So I hired her for like three days over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and she quizzed me. Mm -hmm. And because mind you, I hadn't studied, so I was like shaking off a Red Bull all weekend. Like my husband was <laughs> like, "You okay?" I was like, "Oh no, you know." So I, I did the interview. Come Monday, she prepped me right before. She said, "You good? Just be confident." Yeah. 
And so what I did was I read the job description on what they asked for and I studied to make sure that I was either, I could speak to everything, either being familiar familiar with, knowledgeable of, exposed, or um, experienced. Okay. And so I use my words wisely. That way I don't dig a rabbit hole. And that's also what I teach my students. Mm-hmm. It's how to speak to being familiar, exposed, knowledgeable, experienced, but do it intelligently in a way so you don't dig a rabbit hole. That way you've already told them, well, I don't have this amount of experience here, but I am exposed to it in this way. She said familiar. Mm, knowledgeable of, knowledgeable familiar of. with, and, ex- and experienced. That's good. And I spoke to that wisely. Um, and so I did the interview, and it was crazy because the interview was like 15 minutes. I was like, I ain't get that job. They called me back, and it was like, yeah, you moved to the technical. I did. I was like, I didn't even think I told her much, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> and so then I had a 20-minute interview, and he was like, okay, that's all I need. I was like, oh, I didn't get this job. Within 24 hours, they called me and they said I had the job. I landed my first QA Whoa. job after being in the market for 24 hours in, in one week, and I went from 40K to 80K. Whoa, your life just literally, literally changed. Okay, look. All right, so th- this ain't even my list of questions, <laughs> but I have, I have to ask you this. Yes. What was that moment like? Um, like, what, like, what happened? What were you feeling? What was going through your mind? Like, what was that feeling like? Well, first of all, I can go get my title loan back on my car. <laughs> <laughs> you was like, look, y'all ain't going to see me no more. Y'all ain't going to see me no more. And they haven't. Like, no more. Um, oh, and then man. after that, I landed that road. But because I was so excited, I stayed in the market because she taught me don't stop interviewing until you start. Yes. Oh, my so, gosh. Yes. Because of that, I kept getting interviews. Now, you know, this was pre kind of COVID, like not pre COVID, but like right in the, the, yeah. the beginning. So, you know, the, it was popping. Oh, then. it was crazy. It was crazy. It was like, I ended up having like three jobs at one time. Oh, you was the old, so, the old man. <laughs> so, it happened like in 2021, I, that's probably where I had to balk on my jobs, like because mm-hmm. I was just flipping. I was just like, yeah. like they was giving them to me. And so, I landed that first one. They actually ended up um, taking me on and bringing me direct hire. But within 30 days, I did another interview and they wanted me. But then they went on a hiring freeze. I forgot all about it. 30 days later, they came back. They was like, oh, she wants to hire you. I'm like, holy crap. They want to give me another 80K. So I, that's when I started working two jobs. So, so you had 80K, 80K and you got another, another 80K. Another one within 60 days, 80. And then my husband wait, wait, actually. Wait, wait, real yes. quick. Real, real quick. I wait, wait. <laughs> So how long were you how long were you at the first company before you started at the the second one? 60 days. So oh, you sorry. went from $40,000 a year mm-hmm. to in roughly 60 days quadrupling to $160,000. Right. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. And then my my husband Bro, God will turn some <laughs> junk around. And then my husband, he was working like, uh, also he did, he did insurance on the side too, mm-hmm. but he was working like a customer service type of thing. And it was funny cause I walked past him. He saw me land a second offer and he was like, all right, this girl ain't, you know, he was thinking something else, but she ain't smarter than me. Like I could do this too. Wow. Like and it, we competitive and it was funny, but it was funny. Cause like he was on one of those roads where he couldn't like leave his desk. I was like, you can't even get up and pee, can you? Uh, was like, he was <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> So he went to studying, and within um, three weeks, he landed his first role. And oh, I believe man. his first role was actually $55 an hour. A hundred And that's with 000? the NCR. Ooh. Yes. So he, he actually jumped even further with his Oh, so y'all got real competitive. So we he got like, real okay. competitive. And me being competitive, I stayed in market and that's when I landed the third one. So <laughs> And I landed one for $60 an hour. <laughs> so that's one hundred and twenty k plus one hundred and sixty k you were yeah, at I said 80, that, 80, then I had a 60, like 120, then he had, yeah, so within a matter of four months. And then on top of that, my brother and my cousin, they saw what we did, and I coached them, and within a month, they both landed QA jobs. So I helped my brother. My husband was my first student. He's now worked at least five. He just landed a new offer recently. We put it on Instagram. And so my brother, my cousin, they all have had multiple jobs. And then after that, my sister-in-law landed hers. And oh, you just getting, you get everybody in there. You're like, we my, all yeah, about to eat. My best friend lives in Florida now. She has two remote QA jobs. She moved from Atlanta and rented her house. She just left a month ago. So I haven't even seen her because she left. And now we've helped 80 people. We've helped. Man, she the Adam Sandler. 
You know how Adam Sandler be having all his friends in his movies. He, he, he like, if I get a movie deal, all y'all about to be in this uh, mug. Everybody coming, and it was just crazy because like my cousin was a teacher. Yeah, my brother he was working in like uh, like a IT help desk yeah. um, like role. I don't have a degree, and just to say, yeah. I don't have a degree. I love and it. Um, I've just recently landed my eighth one. I actually, God, people don't even realize I went to, I didn't even share that part, like, so much. Yeah, I don't know. Man. You let me know. Like, <laughs> no, no, I'm so hyped because, like, look, look, we had a bunch of questions and stuff, but I'm like, I dog, you sharing stuff. I'm like, man, we ain't even know about all this stuff. Yeah, so by October, we took everything that we did amongst us as a family. Yeah. And because um, by then, my brother, me, my brother, and my cousin all had, had a, at least three jobs within a six month period. We all had at least three. Man. And so, October 2021, I put out a beta of Road to QA. It wasn't Road to QA net, then, it was a, a ebook and master classes for like $97 on how to be a software tester. Yeah. I had 30 people signed up, so I had to stay up and make this product. And I actually, before I actually um, came into QA, I used to work for ClickFunnels, for Kartra. Yeah. For it. So I've been a VA before, so I can do all of the things. Mm -hmm. And so I did a beta launch and I was like, oh crap, it really, you know, happened. I'm just thinking this little side hustle, you yeah. know, I'll make some little extra money. Although I'm making like six figures now, so I'm just yeah. like, just give me all the money, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, I had to make this product. So then it was like going through the holidays because I launched it October, but come January, I had my first student land her first job for forty five dollars an hour. Man. Because it was going to the holidays, so you know, people bought it because it was $97. And you know, I never thought that it didn't work. It was just like, you know, I'm waiting. Yeah. I used to tell my husband, and I'm like, I'm just waiting for my first five students, my first five students. Well, by January, I had like five students literally laying rows. By, fe by February, I had the next, and it just kept trickling. Yeah. So now we are just in 2023 alone, we've averaged five students landing jobs a month. Wow. So I hope it continues. That's now we're at a total of eight. Five students a month. On a self-paced program. That's incredible. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I love so much? One of the things that I've noticed is how many times we want something that's so bad. And it, it's so crazy. It's like, like many times when God aligns, like when our desires are aligned with God's desires for us. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, we're just thinking about us mm -hmm. and like those that are closest to us. Right. But God is thinking about like how he'll use us to impact so many others. Mm -hmm. And just literally, and I'm thinking about that, like within your story where, you know, you, your husband, y'all were frustrated. Y'all were like, man, look, just us God. not being able to work for a month put us in such a bind to where we were going to mm -hmm. lose everything. Yeah. And for y'all, we're just really thinking like, okay, we got to do some stuff to where, you know, we got to change some things around. You know, yeah. you were thinking like, okay, I got to switch something up. I got to do something different. Yeah. And how even though God used that to bless you, he ultimately wanted to use it for you to be a blessing to so many. I mean, five, like that's so huge because the ripple effect isn't even just five people's lives being transformed. It's mm -hmm their families being right. transformed right. their generations being transformed right so that's so incredible thank you man but to, and I'm, I'm, I'm such a <laughs> i'm such a, a weird i'm bad at math but i'm always right. doing math even though i'm bad at it so in my head i'm like you're making forty thousand. Mm -hmm. 60 days later you jump to uh 160 000 you took on a second job but then you got a third one that was you said 100 that was 120 thousand. Mm -hmm. So that two hundred eighty thousand, your husband got one roughly uh, one hundred and five, fifty five thousand an hour. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's like literally in just a few months, you jump to like like collectively in your household about four hundred thousand dollars, which is crazy. That's such a jump. I want to know, man. So 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 many things I'm thinking. I'm like this ain't even in the list of things. How did that financial just jump because that's such a huge jump yeah how did that impact y'all's lives well like what did that do for your household and everything well we packed everything we moved to mexico oh i've been living in cabo for the last year and a half yeah i think yeah you know i think yeah <laughs> okay so you were living in cabo and we were working on our residency we we're in a and you know looking at the pre the pre-construction because we we're about to buy that um about to finally go get my bronco um 
I'm, I'm not really a big spender of like cars and stuff like that because yeah. of the life I chose. So it makes no sense for me to do that. So yeah. I'm more like my money goes more in experience. Yeah. Um, and so how it changed my life, I got debt free. Um, of course, running a business, I have good debt, you know, like with my business, yeah. but you know, uh, testing different marketing strategies and stuff like that. So, but when it, to change my life, I've been able to help my family that used to help me. Mm -hmm. So instead of them helping me now, I go pay for dinner. Mm. I pay for my mom. My mother wants, you know, I helped her get some business credit, like she, and also business credit. I've now been able to also use business credit too. Mm. Now my mother, now I taught my mother. Um, it's it's done a lot. I mean, it's definitely helped our relationship, mm -hmm. right? Like it's hard to not to say love each other, but it's hard to give that attention when you both stressed about bills. Yes, you know. And um, my daughter has been able to go to private schools, mm. um, and just like I said, being debt free and being able to buy what I want when I want. Yeah, you know, it's you know, you're always gonna be chasing something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, but ultimately, it, I, I could sleep better at night. Like, for me, what it did for me is know that I can be whoever I wanna be. I think software testing, that's why my company is actually called Road to QA. I don't think people really realize why. Mm -hmm. So Road to QA is not just about being a QA. It's first about landing your first QA role and realizing that from that you can be a scrum master, a BA, a product owner, a data analyst, a QA engineer. A lead. I did not even know that. Yeah. Wow. So it's the road. It's saying get that first the one road. and now you use transferable Ooh. skills because now you're going to learn and you're going to be amongst those people in yeah. your roles and you can be those people too. So yes. I love this. this. Oh, this is this is so rich. So rich. So good. Man, it's it's so incredible how just like increasing finance mm -hmm. can just really change so much. It has a trickle effect in so many different areas right. in our lives. Right. It's like many times we're just thinking like, oh man, I just wanna, I just wanna pay these bills. Mm -hmm. And it's like not knowing the trickle effect that it has on everything else in life. It's, it's right. really an in incredible thing. And I love that for you. Yeah. I love that Thank for you, you and I love that for your students who've done your program, yeah. the impact that you've made. They, they've watched me move from Atlanta to go to Cabo. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like I have people like I literally just I did like a meetup um, the other day with um, some of my students. And I actually met one of my um, well, actually my because um, I don't run Road to QA by myself anymore. I have a student, Antoine, Sonia, um, Sade, uh, Vanessa. Shout out to all of them. But uh, they uh, Sonia, Sade, Antoine, they all landed roles. And Antoine came to Cabo. I met him in person. He okay. actually does our weekly mentorship. He also is a scrum master now, and he has a QA role. Um, and then Sonia, she landed her QA role, and she's a mentor inside of Road to QA. Um, my brother comes in. He helps from time to time. He's a QA engineer too, as he likes to say. He's, oh yeah. He focuses. He focuses more on um, API testing. Okay. So they don't want. They come into Road to QA. They don't just get me. They get everyone else. And then also now we have a graduates chat. So now when people graduate, essentially graduate, they land their first row, I put them in a chat so they can be amongst each other to mm -hmm. share that first day experience of going into their new role. So. Man. I love that so much. It's it's so incredible just how much you've been able to do and just be able to accomplish. One thing I want to ask really quickly, then I'm going to get back to like the actual right, set right. list of questions. So you, you mentioned working at three companies yes. at once. And I'm not, I'm not going to ask if you're still doing that. We're not going to do that. <laughs> but what I will ask instead is how, because I'm familiar with job stacking or overemployment. Yeah. I know how people can do it as software engineers, mm -hmm. and I usually tell people to not do it if they're trying to be like a sales engineer, because it's like, you gotta be in all these meetings and right. schedule. How are you able to job stack? How is someone how, right. able to job stack as a QA tester or right. QA analyst? Right. How was that possible for them to work at two or three companies? Right, so disclaimer, I'm not telling you to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not at all. <laughs> I tell you Just to do it, but the sister was tired of going to Title Pond, so the title, yeah. you know, pond in my car loan. So I had to do what I had to do. Yeah. Um, well, when I first started, all of my roles were contracts, so mm -hmm. they wasn't like competitive against each other, and also yeah. still reading like any non disclosures and stuff like that. So, so first of all, make okay, sure cool. you haven't signed anything that you know doesn't. It says you can't. It says that. you can't do that. Okay, that's, that's the good. first thing. 
Um, when you, especially like if you get a direct hire, that's definitely a little different. I'm not gonna say I haven't done it in the past, but you know, I'm not doing it now. I have one and I run my company. That's what I, you know, um, I would like to do some more freelance on the side or mm -hmm. something like that, but I am running my company and got some things that I'm, I have, you know, investments behind the scenes that I'm doing. Okay. So right now it's, it's just keeping one and, mm -hmm. and running my business. But how a person could also do it, like, so for me, people would say, like, don't you get anxiety? Well, the first thing you do is, I would say, get acclimated to your first role yeah. before you even try. Like, mine kind of fell on me, you know, and I was like, I couldn't say no to money then, you know? So I was like, <laughs> oh, we're gonna work this out. And so I used to sit with like a monitor here, a monitor here, and then earplugs on both because sometimes Whoa. the meetings- <laughs> will be the same, the same time. time. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's so, it'd be so crazy. My husband would be laughing at me, and I'd be like, I don't know. I'm like, right now. But the good thing was, both of those jobs, they didn't have us on camera. Yeah, okay. So that's why I say the first thing. And you had, I'm sure you had your mic off unless you had to right, speak on one. Right, 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 right. But, but not headphones, earplugs on one, and because I got one job here, one job here. Wow. So, and then if I need to talk, I just unmute and I say what I need to say. And then I go back on mute and I'm listening, and that's it. But so that's really how I did it. Um, and then the other job, they typically was after those, so it was always just that one. Mm -hmm. But you know, from time to time, you know, you ain't doing nothing, and now somebody want to call a meeting at the same time. So I got Sarah over here, and I got Kim over here on two different jobs. I'm like, so I'm like, yeah, I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Okay, let's have this meet. Like, I have had moments like that, so um, be Yo, careful. Yo, that's with that. so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, but that's how I did it. Yo, you um, did what right? you had to do. Had you to, said, look, I'm about to get both these uh, bags. Hey, I, I, I did. And, I love it. And and I mean, but I learned so much too because I did it. Let's, like really the, the value was I really learned a lot. That mm -hmm. actually positioned me because what one job didn't do the other job, maybe I did API testing or some mm -hmm. database testing. So I was like instantly upskilling myself in 60 days like because I had to. And so now that positioned me to actually be competitive without actually going to a boot camp because essentially I was actually right there learning on the job and learning how to do it. So, man. So I think I answered that question. No, no, no. You, okay. def <laughs> you definitely answered that question. And you know, it's it's so funny because the way you answered it was so real because I've, I've talked to people that are job stack before and they'll usually talk about like how to do it and, you know, they'll have like some complex ways to make it make sense. But the fact, no, you really was like, no, I really was like just making it work. And right. I, I love that so much. Right. I, I, yeah. that's, that's incredible. And, I mean, my, my, my key would be to wake up in the morning and earlier, look at okay. the day for each. Yeah. See where your meetings are first. And that's probably, that's one of the first things. See where your meetings are, you know, know do you, are, are you normally on camera here and stuff like that, be ready for it. Yeah. So I, I was always waking up to get ready for what probably was gonna happen that day by yeah. looking at the schedule. And then when I'm in my standup, I'm quick with my standup. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I need help with this, I'm gonna pull you to the side. Okay, bye. You know, that's kind of was me like, cause I, I know I got two, so I gotta go behind the scenes, yeah. so. Yo, so I want to know from y'all, uh, so from the Patreon <laughs> members that are tuning in right now, let us know in the comments if any of y'all have any done done any job stacking, and or if you are job stacking right now, but if you haven't done it and you're not doing it, mm -hmm. would you ever do it? <laughs> and what, what would the bag have to be for you to do it? Uh, for those of y'all that are watching this uh, after the fact on YouTube, let us know in the comments, same thing. Have you job stacked? Would you do it? What would it have to look like? Or would you be too afraid to do it? We definitely want to know from y'all. Let us know. Uh, so... All right now, you posted in July. I was on your on your Instagram, on the Instagrams. Right. And you posted in July that you and your husband both used to be rideshare drivers. Yes. Or Uber drivers, Lyft mm -hmm. drivers. And that was before you got started in your tech career. Right. And of course now being a ed tech business owner as well. I wanna know, so how did you and your husband meet and how did your marriage help in your career process and journey? Oh, wow. Um, so for me, I think me and my husband, we've been from the blow up bed to what I call the beach. The blow up bed to, to the, the beach. beach. Um, uh, we met when 18 years Grind. old. Right. <laughs> They've been there. Right. From the blow up bed to the, well, from the bus to the blow up bed to the beach, right? <laughs> it's, that's really how I have it. So I met him on the bus on Covenant Highway in Atlanta. Covenant on the bus? Right. Covenant Highway. He used to work at AutoZone. And I was coming for, I used to work for a company called MU Corps. Okay. And I would get on the bus from Norcross to go to Decatur. And we met on the bus. And I was sitting there and I had my son, but he was two at the time. And I had a chain. And, and my son was there. So he pulled the chain. And he was like, well, first of all, his first words to me, because I'm tall and mm -hmm. I stretched. And he obviously he was like, 
damn girl, you tall like Shaq. I was like, oh, really? That was that was, that was the first thing. That I was the game, girl. You, girl, you tall like Shaq. Shaq, right? And so I got on the bus, and he sat next to me. I was like, okay, he's still bothering me. Oh, my so he God. pulled my chain with my son. I'm looking at him like, why is you touching my, you know? And yeah. so he's like, who is that? I said, it's my son. You don't look like you got a son. And like that's literally uh, how we met. And so from there, we it's like the bus got quiet after that. We talked the whole time. Ooh. But I thought I gave him the wrong phone number because I had just changed my phone number. Come to find out I gave him the right phone number. He ended up okay. calling me. And from there, we would go out. And it just happened from there. And that was 18 years ago. He helped me raise, wow. you know, he's a you know a father to my son who's now 20. Yeah. And we have a 14-year-old daughter together. And that's how that got started. <laughs> that's crazy. That's yeah. so beautiful. That's yes. it's it's that's just, it's like girl, you tall like Shaq. I'm trying to tell you. Listen, fellas, <laughs> when it's the right woman, you could you could say whatever. <laughs> no, but that's that's actually cute though. That's that's really cute. I, I love yeah. that a lot. And so, so beautiful how y'all met. Right. How has marriage? Some of y'all y'all been through a lot, like you said, Ooh. from the bus to the blow up bed to the mm-hmm. beach. Yeah. How has marriage, how did marriage assist or what were some of the challenges or things that you went through in your career journey because of marriage? Yeah, well, my son, my husband also, he's six years older than me. Mm-hmm. Um, we met when I was about 19 or I was 20, sorry, because he probably won't like me saying 19, but I was 20. And so um, from there, I think... Um, how did it help? Like we had a lot of growing to, to do then. Like we get yeah. we got married. My my daughter came like a few years after, so we really didn't get married until I think five years later. But we've been together for eighteen years. Okay. So we've been together about twelve years married. Um, I'm trying to do my math, <laughs> but um, I think how it helped is because we've been together so long, we've been in that grind together, and I think for us we just it's like a. A, a snap on like a light you know you cut it on you cut it off like when it's time to go in and work for the house we just do it yeah it's no question so like when I was in you know Chicago like we actually lived in Chicago for some time because I'm actually from Chicago but I live half my life in Atlanta we went back to live in Chicago for some time and we did Uber we drove Uber we drove Lyft I did Amazon deliveries and I would go into these high rise and I'll never forget I went to this um this tall uh, building and this this lady and she came out and it was like I, I called it a tiger dog because I didn't know what it was but it was a ground a greyhound a greyhound okay. beautiful dog she and it's like the dog looked at me like I wasn't supposed to be in the hotel I mean in that apartment like that's how rich that place was yeah and so you know when you're doing those type of deliveries and you see those lifestyles yeah. I would peek you know when I'm dropping them off and I'm like man and my kids used to deliver with me too. So my son and my daughter, my daughter be waiting for her Dunkin' Donuts after each run and we will be delivering and we'll be waiting for our stuff to beat. And my husband, he'll be in his car and we'll be doing that. And yeah. so we did that mostly in Chicago before we came back to Atlanta. And then that's how we resettled in Atlanta, landed our jobs, like our life kind of changed then. So yeah. it's like, but how it actually works together, um, I don't know. I guess I guess we're just a team where we can't, we understand it's not just on one person. Yeah. I don't look at him as just because he's a man that is on one person. But the background for me is that I grew up with my father also half in my life, like before my parents got divorced, my, my father actually was a bus driver and he washed windows. So we used to go with him washing windows mm-hmm. in Chicago for Dunkin' Donuts, Foot Locker, stuff like that. So I've, I've, I've been a part of the life of actually like the hustle Yeah. in a way, I don't like that word. But doing the work. Yeah. My dad was a bus driver and he would clean carpets and wash windows after work. So that's all I know. And so I think for me, I don't just depend on him. If I see an opportunity, he actually, he respects my opinion of why we should do it. Um, I think I answered that maybe. Yeah, no, you definitely answered it. I mean, you, you definitely dropped a lot of gems. Uh, I want to ask a question. When it comes to, uh, I feel like in this generation, um, a lot of people are are selfish and they feel like, Everybody has to have it all together and they have expectations that they themselves don't have. So looking back with where you both were, um, what advice would you give people now who are in relationships and um, and they are who desire companionship and they may have this unrealistic expectation that the man should that their man should be a six figure earner or the woman should be this, this and that. How do you and how do you uh, steer people who are looking for love who don't have that? 
Oh wow, that's a wow, a different question. I don't I guess because even for myself, I don't I don't believe as long as he working, like if I see your hands dirty, I'm fine. We doing something. Yeah. You know, so I'm gonna work with you. You know, that's just but again, my yeah. father was a bus driver and a window washer. Yeah. So maybe I see things differently. Yeah. And I just feel like, okay, that's a man I can work with. Yeah. Right. He's willing to do something. Mm -hmm. So now is there an opportunity that maybe I see that he doesn't that I can mm -hmm. bring to him and now he'll help us. Yes. And then we can grow that. We can yeah. take the money and invest. So for me, I just think if it's someone that, you know, can do, is it someone that you can work with? That would be my thing. Like, do yeah. they have they, those qualities that they can work with you or are they just waiting on you? That's solid. That's solid. I, I love that so much. So. There, you've mentioned that there are six steps to making an authentic career pivot. Mm -hmm. Please drop these gems for people. Right. What are the six steps for someone to make an authentic career pivot? All right. I call that my six-step skills method because I okay. believe we all have skills. S-K-I-L-L-S. -L -L I hope that's it right. So <laughs> first, you want to start with an understanding of who you are and who you've been up until this point. Yeah. You don't discount your past experiences, skills, and knowledge, all right? So you can actually use that to actually pivot in. So start with who you actually are and, and look at your past. Okay. And then you want to know, meaning you want to you want to acquire new knowledge and know new things and add that. So now you have new experience on top of who you've been. Yeah. Right. So if I'm a, if I've been a customer support rep, OK, I, I know that that's my past. But mm -hmm. then I'm now going to go get new knowledge to be a software tester yeah. to put it on top. And then you're going to take the, both of those and you're going to improve and your resume for the market. So that you can tell a great story. Yeah. All right. And then from there, you're going to learn how to actually um, level up yourself for the interview so you can be that person for the job you're going mm -hmm. for. Then you're going to load your resume into the market and your profile. And then you're going to skill up and score your first interviews. So that is I love I love method. the acronym. I love the, <laughs> the skills just all throughout there. So I believe you all got skills. That's oh, that's so weird. I think. Before I got into tech, one of the things, I was a Lyft driver for a while, mm -hmm. uh, right before I got in tech industry. And I needed that period more than I, I knew. Right. Because before that, I knew that I wanted to make more money and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And while Lyft driving, I started listening to different books mm -hmm. and listening to, I was listening to different books on Audible. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I started listening to different podcasts. I started kind of dumping a lot of just empty entertainment and I was okay what can I pour into myself mm -hmm. and I noticed throughout that process that like my mindset changed I became a different person right. and so it allowed me to prepare me to be, be basically like get into tech and be able to be a bit of a rocket ship mm -hmm. when I hear your story I hear the component of you getting in tech and of course like just stuff scaling and going crazy yeah. What I'm curious about is what were some of the things that you did maybe before that or even once you got in tech that set you up to be as successful as you are? Wow. Um, like I said, my, <laughs> my the business part was an accident. Um, me growing a business now and realizing what we've done was an accident because it was just an ebook and master class. It's now it's a full members portal. We got community calls. We do weekly. Like it, it, I do a 10 day internship. Mm -hmm. where you were with me and you're literally in a day in the life of a software tester. It's stuff is going to break. Developers aren't going to like you. Mm -hmm. You're going to do all the stuff, you know, all the things, so that you can speak into scenario-based answers mm -hmm. in an interview. And that's how I prepare my students. But ultimately, um, what I feel, I think I lost the question just that fast. Yeah, no, just, and actually, <laughs> I'm happy you kind of lost because I kind of wanted to like go I think into I lost a little the bit question. more. I'm about to say something. <laughs> so, because realistically, Someone could, could get into tech and make some money. Right. But you haven't just made money. Like, you've done things. You've been able to do things business-wise. Even the way that you have, mm -hmm. you know, you have Road to QA structured and set up and organized. Those aren't things people just... That, no, that's not an accident. Right. So, that, come, that actually so comes from... So, where did that from, come from? Right. That came from who I was before. Okay. I work for ClickFunnels. I work ah. for Kartra. I, so I already know how to be. I was a Facebook ads manager yeah. behind Market Like a Nurse, six-figure and seven-figure brands. Yeah. So I've been behind the scenes of launches, and I've seen people make money. In fact, I resigned at my last virtual or Facebook ads manager um, management job like some years ago because I was only making like 40K, and I was like, I'm watching her make millions. 
and I'm mm-hmm. I'm inspired by her, but I'm like I'm only making forty, and I lost my passion for it. So I actually started hating Facebook at you know at marketing because mm-hmm. I felt like you know either it's that or performance marketing. I just didn't feel like I feel like well if I can run ads, I can do it myself, and I can throw out a product. Man. So I simply took all of who I've been, yeah, and then I launched my program. So again, don't discount who you yes. are because you have skills. That's so important for people to hear because I know that most people that are listening and watching are probably thinking like, man, like, you know, whether it's myself or it's you or it's others that are in this space where it's like, man, like they've been able to make so much money. They've been able to do so many different things. And, and it's like, it's so beautiful because many times people will discount where they're at. Mm-hmm. And I want, I, I wanted her to like address, I wanted to ask that question because I want people to understand, even those of you that aren't in tech yet, those of you that haven't done Road to QA yet, mm-hmm. understand that even what you've done before, not only is it their transferable skills just right. for you to get in tech, but also some of the things that you've done that you've discounted are, are a value for you to be able to scale once you're in the industry. And it's like not despising like where mm-hmm. people are currently at right. and realizing, yo, where you're currently at, God could be using that right. to prepare you so that once you are in tech, you have something unique about yourself that you're able to leverage. And right. so that's why I was so curious. I was, I was like, yo, I was, I was like, cause I know I, I'm seeing buku people get in tech right now. They're making right. money. Right. But a lot of them aren't able to do what you've done. And it's so beautiful to know, oh, part, part of the reason why you've been able to do what you've done mm-hmm is because of all of the other experience you had in the backdrop right. of your past. And it's so beautiful that you didn't just work at those jobs and just say whatever, mm-hmm. but you actually like gain skills and you allow right. those things to stick to you and you've leveraged those in your career now. Right, yeah, people don't understand that they have domain knowledge, technology knowledge. Yeah. So whether you've been in healthcare or finance, if I've never been in healthcare, but you have, you have you're valuable. Because mm-hmm. even as a software tester, you add new skills, but that domain knowledge of healthcare, they're gonna like you over me. You're going to understand the compliances and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So don't discount who you've been just because it's been a customer service or even POS machines. Wendy's, Chick-fil-A hires QA testers. Who's a better QA tester? Because I'm going to tell you, I don't really like to cook all the time. So if I had to use a, a POS machine to test, I'm probably not the best one because I'm going to get aggravated. You know, like yeah. so. But if you work there, right, you've already used it. You know it. So you would be a great QA tester, UAT tester, user acceptance tester. That's how you make your pivot. Yo. I love that. So look, we, we've been able to talk about a lot of different things. Uh, I've enjoyed this conversation. There's Thanks so much more I want to talk about. We definitely <laughs> got to have you on again in the future. Uh, but I would love, Jenny, just to give you the floor to share anything, whether it's about Road to QA, something, right. within, your, with something within yourself, just something that you want to leave the people with wow. uh, before we close out. I guess the only thing is to go back to what I said. You have skills. You have something inside of you. Mm-hmm. You have something that you can skill up from or you can monetize from yeah right and it's inside of you but you have to identify that like really look at who you've been and how you can contribute that to the world and don't discount that um just find a way to make more money in your career or make more money online by being who you've already been yeah that's that's really it i think it's it's not a science i think it's just you showing up authentically